Glass is big, bulky, and breakable. Most telescopes in space don't use glass anymore, but instead they have mirrors made from composite materials, like silicon carbide or alloys, of aluminum and beryllium. Even so, these materials are limited in the size they can be when flying to space, and can be easily damaged during launch or from micrometeoroid impacts hitting their surfaces. To get the 6.5 meter diameter JWST mirror into space, we had to make it from many segments and fold it up inside a rocket. The unfolding of this $10 billion telescope was one of the most nerve-wracking and complicated maneuvers ever done by a probe in space. What if there could be a solution to these problems that lets us build even bigger and better space telescopes and didn't use any of these fragile, rigid and bulky materials? What if instead we made telescope mirrors out of liquid? A telescope that can heal itself from impact damage, can easily launch inside current rocket sizes, and then spread out to be over 150 feet in diameter, and then answer some of the biggest questions in cosmology and astrophysics. That is the idea of liquid mirror telescopes. They could be tens or hundreds of times larger than JWST, and completely eliminate many of the problems we have with traditional glass or alloy mirrors. For telescopes, bigger is better, as larger mirrors let us collect more light, image fainter and more distant objects, and do so with better and better resolution. As we build these bigger and bigger telescopes though, using solid mirrors made of glass or alloys and coated in reflective materials is becoming harder and harder. It's difficult because we now want to build telescopes that are tens of meters in diameter, but building a single mirror that large is pretty much impossible, especially when we then want to launch it to space. They start to buckle and break under their own weight and stresses, and gravity starts to play havoc with them too especially when tilting them to view particular parts of the sky. It's also really difficult and expensive, and that's why most of the largest telescopes now are built out of segments of smaller mirrors that come together to form the large reflective surface. This is true for telescopes like JWST, but also ones on the ground like the Giant Magellan Telescope and others too. Going to space does remove the issue of gravity, but introduces a new constraint of having to fit your big mirror inside a rocket to launch it to space. We did do it with JWST, so we know it's possible, albeit very difficult. But as we always want to go bigger and bigger, this will only get harder and harder. These mirrors also need to be meticulously ground and polished to be as smooth as possible and to be perfect parabolic shapes that focus the large amount of light they collect into a very small area so that it can then be collected by the detectors. For example, this is how the light path looks for JWST. You can see how it focuses on the smaller mirror and then even more inside the telescope where the detectors live. Building all this is very difficult, very slow, and very expensive. Once again, the idea of a liquid mirror that could be launched in a smallish canister and then oozed out onto a frame to make the mirror seems to solve all of these problems in one go. The exact designs are still being tested and refined, but NASA has given at least another three years of funding to the Fluidic Telescope, or FLUT for short, to study this technology and demonstrate that it can work. This follows already pretty successful tests on board low gravity parabolic flights and on the International Space Station. So let's run through the specifics of the idea. It starts with a simple frame. This will need to fold up for launch, but unfolding a frame should be relatively straightforward compared to unfolding entire mirrors and sun shields like we did for JWST. Then the reflective liquid will slowly be added to the frame once the telescope is in space. When added in the right amounts, surface tension pretty much then does all of the rest of the work for us. We need the reflective surface to be able to focus light to a point, and to do that the surface of the liquid needs to be curved. Luckily, liquids naturally like to make these kinds of shapes on their own, even when there's no external forces acting on them. On Earth, for example, small droplets of water will stay in a spherical shape, but if they get too large, they get squished by gravity. In space, that problem goes away, and as long as the amounts are right and the liquid adheres well to the frame, a curved shape will naturally happen. Then liquid can actually be added or removed to change the exact shape of the surface. This means that the mirror will actually be adjustable during the mission through this process. 
Adding a bit more liquid makes a convex lens, while sucking a bit out gives you a concave lens. This can be used to change the focal length of the telescope while it's in flight, something that's very appealing for space missions to be able to do, as it allows it to image and study a wider range of objects really well. The frame itself is likely to be circular, but it may also be a bit adjustable. Changing the exact shape will also change the properties of the surface, just like changing the amount of liquid. Another huge benefit of liquid is how smooth it remains, and they don't require the expensive, difficult and slow process to make them so smooth. In early tests of this technology, the liquid mirrors had a roughness of less than a nanometer. That is better than most solid telescopes. JWST, for example, has been polished to about a 20 nanometer roughness, so we're already beating that even in these early tests. There is also a bit of leniency in the exact shape of the frame. For example, if it gets a bit dented or damaged, there will be an impact around the edges of the mirror, but in the center, the liquid will naturally compensate for that damage. So along with its ability to heal after impact damage, this all sounds really good. There are still some questions that need to be answered though. The most obvious one, I think, is what liquid should be used. The obvious choices you might want to start at are mercury and gallium. Both are liquids at a wide range of temperatures, and both are incredibly reflective. I've now read in a few articles that they've both actually been ruled out of use, but I can't find any reference that explains why. If you know, please let us all know in the comments down below. They would both be fairly heavy though. For example, the goal is to one day have a 50 meter liquid telescope in space. And in that case, the required mercury, for example, would weigh a couple of tons, even though it only needs to be a centimeter thick or so across the mirror. That would still be less than JWST weighs, so I'm not sure if that's the problem with these liquids or if it's something else entirely. The expectation is now to use a liquid salt that neither freezes nor boils in space, but the specifics are still being studied and tested and I don't know any more than that. Whatever liquid is used, it needs to not evaporate out there in space. There is an open question as to whether the mirrors would be launched as a liquid and then cured when deployed, either by UV radiation from the sun or by some other method on board the telescope. This gives the structure a lot more solidity, but you lose the benefits of being able to change the shape of the mirror in flight and you lose your immunity to little micrometeoroid damage. Because of that, I personally hope they end up choosing an option that keeps it liquid in space. I also think that's kind of cooler, but I'm also not an expert in the engineering here, so I will defer to the teams involved. Another question still being discussed is the exact wavelength range that the telescope will be sensitive to. Anything above the energy of X-rays, them included, is certainly not possible. And currently the favored range is infrared and visible light. Although UV is not 100% out of the question either. It will end up depending on the exact liquid they settle on using, as well as some other factors like the temperature the telescope operates at. In terms of design, I've been showing you the concept art of the flute mission up to now. You can see a few unique things here. We have our large 50-ish meter mirror, and the bus that contains a lot of the instrumentation is here at the bottom. There are no struts to hold a secondary mirror either. Instead, there's a second freely floating craft that needs to be put at the focal point of the telescope. This allows it to move if the focal length of the telescope is changed during the mission. There wouldn't be a secondary mirror, this would just contain all the detectors for the telescope. It also eliminates any diffraction spikes around bright objects that are normally caused by struts and holes in the mirrors that pretty much all other telescopes have to deal with. So that's very interesting and pretty cool. Given all of this, what's next for the idea? Well, as I've said, they do have funding for more tests, but these things take time. The hope is to build a one meter test telescope in the next decade to be launched and prove the tech actually works as we're saying it should. That sounds small, but really a one meter telescope in space is still amazing and would do incredible work, even if we have to wait a bit longer to reach the 50 meters we're hoping for. Another nice thing about this is that the physics doesn't really change as we get bigger. So scaling these to be bigger and bigger is relatively straightforward compared to traditional telescopes. I should also say that there is actually a liquid telescope already operational on Earth. It's called the International Liquid Mirror Telescope in India. It's already taking images and doing science. For example, here is the first supernova it identified in 2023. The setup is a four meter liquid mirror, but since it's on Earth, it has to work a little bit harder to get the parabolic shape. Thanks to gravity, this one needs to be spun to create that shape. 
Initially, it was thought it would have to be spun in a space version 2, or use some sort of electromagnetic radiation to recreate the shape. But in space, it turns out that the surface tension is enough to give us those shapes. The telescope in India can also only point straight up, as tilting it would spill the liquid. The size of Earth-based liquid mirrors are also limited by the Coriolis force of the rotating Earth, which eventually will stop the nice shape we want from forming. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on a potential liquid mirror space telescope in the comments down below. And thanks a lot for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!